This is the most impressive male protagonist I've ever seen. He can run most of the map in one go. Faster than a train, he gently lands and incidentally crushes a giant locust, effortlessly throwing it into the sky. Even the super strong magic that can destroy the world, he uses it to wipe stains. And every time he does these incredible things, he still looks innocent, unaware of his own strength. But it's not really his fault, because in his village, he can't even catch a rabbit. He is even mercilessly killed by a rabbit. So he starts crying disheartened. Fortunately, his brother Atwood catches the rabbit for him, and he regains his smile. The protagonist's name is Lloyd, born in a village called Cologne. Everyone in the village is a descendant of some savior hero. Everyone possesses extraordinary abilities. Lloyd is the weakest in the village. Yet, he has a dream, that is to become a valiant soldier. So, he embarks on a journey to achieve his dream. Following the village chief's instructions, he arrives at the witch Mary's house. The witch asks him what wish he wants to fulfill, but he must pay a corresponding price. Lloyd says he is here just to join the army and wants to stay here for a while. Mary is stunned. Are you out of your mind, kid? I really don't know which country bumpkin this is. Lloyd immediately answers honestly that he is from Cologne Village. Mary trembles. Then Lloyd takes out a crystal ball given by the village chief. Mary is shocked to see the crystal ball. After a burst of intense light, a projection of the village chief EKA appears. Mary immediately kneels before her. Because EKA is her master, EKA instructs her to take good care of Lloyd. After all, he is the village's favorite. Mary has no choice but to obey. As soon as EKA leaves, she immediately turns hostile. She grabbed the crystal ball and smashed it into the wardrobe like throwing a baseball. She had just sat back down in her seat. When EKA crawled out of the wardrobe, she had used the crystal ball as a medium to teleport. She came to cast a minor misfortune curse on Mary. Using the super ancient civilization's rune script, Mary began to experience a series of misfortunes. She tripped over her skirt. Her clothes got caught on a table. Pulling a long thread, dinner time, after eating and drinking, the two began to chat, during which Mary learned various astonishing things. It takes 10 days to reach here by train. Lloyd only took 6 days to run here. This made him feel inferior, because his grandfather said it should only take 2 days. Mary asked if he encountered any monsters on the way. Lloyd said there were no monsters, just some giant locusts, and fire-breathing lizards and the like. Mary was so shocked she spilled her coffee all over her face. Lloyd took out a cloth to help her wipe it off. Unexpectedly, after wiping, Mary's face became smooth and beautiful. Fine lines and freckles had disappeared. It turns out Lloyd had drawn runes on it. Not only can it remove any curse, but it can also easily remove stubborn stains. Mary was instantly petrified. She had spent three years learning the curse removal runes, and he was using them to clean stains. A devastated Mary directly crashed through the wall. The girl was wearing a hat to prevent others from seeing her face. A man passing by turned around and looked, realized it was the belt princess, and started cursing at her. Already accustomed to the abuse, the girl chose to ignore him. She walked sadly into the alley. She just leaned against the wall, trying to catch her breath. Suddenly, a giant locust crawled out. It bared its teeth and pounced towards her. The girl rolled away to dodge the attack. The locust thrust violently. The girl jumped back and leapt into the air, but was blown against the wall by the wind stirred up by the locust. Then she heavily fell to the ground, just as the locust was about to swallow her. Lloyd fell from the sky. He knocked down the locust with one kick and then threw it into the sky. Killing it seemed as easy as killing a bug. Lloyd carefully helped the girl up, dusted her off, and gently wiped her with a towel. Then he turned and walked away nonchalantly. Watching Lloyd's retreating figure, the girl was deeply fascinated. The girl's name was Celine because she always wore a belt on her head. She was also called Belt Princess. This was a cursed belt that could not be removed no matter what. She had been tormented by this for many years. A priest told her only the strength of a strong person could unlock it. That's why she had been training hard until today. But it was still to no avail. She finally snapped, deciding that even if it meant dying, she would tear off the belt today. But unexpectedly, the belt came off easily. She immediately understood. That boy was the strong person she was looking for. The next day, the square was filled with various people coming to enlist. Among them was the man who had cursed at Belt Princess the day before, and the notorious one-armed female mercenary Andrea, who, because she disapproved of her employer, 
had beaten him up directly, she also carried various criminal charges, yet such a fierce mercenary, the next moment was afraid to even breathe, because she sensed the terrifying strength of Lloyd beside her, like a wild beast, Lloyd had just greeted her, and she was so frightened that she immediately assumed an attack stance, Lloyd thought he had scared her, so he bowed to apologize, this made Andrea feel surprisingly honored, she was suddenly knocked flying by Celine, Celine kept muttering Lloyd's name, openly displaying her love for him, at this moment, Andrea was planning to sneak away, but was caught by the head by Celine, asking about her relationship with Lloyd. Hearing Lloyd say she was just a friend from the enlistment, Celine immediately smiled again. The enlistment exam was about to start. The content was to attack an iron plate with one's own weapon. The greater the damage, the higher the score. An officer nearby had also seen through Lloyd's strength, looking forward to what kind of score he would achieve. That evening, the list of successful examinees was announced, but Lloyd's name was not found on the list. This boy flicked away two locusts with a snap of his fingers, casually casting spells of catastrophic destruction, ordinary people shivered just by being near him, yet such a powerful person, in the enlistment exam, failed to qualify, the next day, the colonel hurriedly searched for Lloyd's figure, the list was thoroughly checked but his information was nowhere to be found, Celine kept repeating Lloyd's name, Andrea also couldn't believe why he didn't pass the exam, until they saw his written exam paper, the truth became clear, because it was filled with incomprehensible doodles, they then showed the exam paper to Colonel Colin. Colin immediately recognized that these were top-level magical, rune symbols. He slapped the ignorant Colonel Kevin, so the four of them began searching for Lloyd, wanting to see him use the rune symbols in person, and also to find the missing princess, so they could make an exception to let Lloyd join the army. Meanwhile, Lloyd arrived in front of a restaurant, planning to find a job there, as soon as he entered, a fierce figure pounced towards him, he dodged the attack with a slight flick, it turned out to be a burly uncle, Lloyd quickly bowed and apologized, stating he meant no harm, he was just looking for a job, the uncle looked at him with contempt, your unfathomable strength, is to find a job? Lloyd added that his specialties were cooking and cleaning, the uncle misunderstood it as killing and cleaning up, Lloyd then said he was the best at home, the uncle misunderstood home as some kind of mysterious organization, let Lloyd show his strength then, and got ready for a fight, but Lloyd seriously started cooking instead, the uncle began to doubt his own misunderstanding, but then he thought, just the dodge he performed earlier, proved his extraordinary ability, Lloyd quickly prepared dinner, the uncle decided to go along with it, pretending to eat his food, but didn't expect to be unable to stop after one bite, the food was completely swept clean by him, the uncle then believed that he truly came to work, and also decided to personally supervise this dangerous individual, so he agreed to hire him, that evening, Ika and Mary were shocked to hear about Lloyd's disqualification, Ika even planned to destroy the kingdom, Mary, in desperation, repeatedly tried to dissuade her, no other way, since he failed the exam, come back to the village with me, however, Lloyd said he wanted to stay in this home, to continue and take the exam next year, seeing his sincerity. Ika, reluctantly agreed to let him stay, before Ika left, Mary suddenly asked her to save the country, because the king was manipulated by behind-the-scenes forces, they would soon be forced into war with the country of Geo, hoping Ika would stop this war, but Ika refused her request, because they do not interfere in human affairs, unless there is a demon lord or an irresistible catastrophe, after saying this, she vanished into the cupboard, before leaving, she didn't forget to cast a medium-level misfortune curse on Mary. As a result, Mary's legs suddenly cramped, and both legs cramped together. Out of frustration, Mary threw the crystal ball into the well. This boy possesses great strength, but now works for someone else in a restaurant. That day, Kevin and Andrea came to eat at the restaurant, and unexpectedly found the previously sparsely populated restaurant was now bustling. Everyone was enjoying the delicious food. It's known that the restaurant was previously just barely operating because it was large and affordable. The whole place was filthy. Now the floor was scrubbed to a shine. Andrea asked Kevin who that uncle really was. Kevin answered that he was once a companion of the princess, the captain of the royal guard. Crom, their ordered dishes were served quickly, they just tasted a bit, and couldn't stop eating, Kevin wondered how this rough man could cook so deliciously, then saw Lloyd carrying the dishes out, causing them to spit out their food, afterwards, the uncle even asked him to take out the trash, shocked, Kevin loudly asked do you know who that kid is, the uncle answered I don't know, do you know, Kevin fell silent instantly, he just knew that Lloyd was very powerful, but didn't know his background, at this moment, 
Lloyd arrived next to the garbage pile. A large bug was glaring at him. Lloyd easily threw it away with a flick of his hand. On the way back, he saw Mary sneaking around, so he curiously followed her. Meanwhile, Celine and Aram had an argument. Because she had plucked all the chest hair off a man who tried to flirt with her, Aram thought this would damage their noble reputation. He swung his axe. Ready to start a fight, Celine was also ready for battle. Aram charged first. Swinging his axe, he raised his hand for a thunderous crescent slash. But the next second, the axe was knocked away. It turned out that a belt had protected her. After being saved, Celine kept rubbing the belt, thinking it was Lloyd's full love for her. Just then, Lloyd happened to arrive. Celine was even more excited and clung to him. Her heart was blooming with joy. She kept praising Lloyd, with starry eyes fixed on him. At that time, Colonel Kevin and others also arrived at the scene. Celine explained to them that Lloyd was dueling with Aram to protect her. Aram was completely baffled upon hearing this. Kevin asked if it was true. He replied that it was purely slander. As a hero, he would not strike innocent people. Colin was greatly surprised. Because Kevin always advocated for resolving issues peacefully, Kevin turned to her and said that the boy was Lloyd, the one who could use rune magic. Upon hearing this, Colin immediately declared the fight to start. Because both wanted to see Lloyd use the rune magic, Aram had a sudden inspiration, thinking the colonel was testing his strength, giving him a chance to show off his skills. He excitedly shook hands with Lloyd to express his gratitude. Meanwhile, Andrea was worried about Aram's safety. Kevin mentioned that Aram was tough-skinned. As long as he wasn't hit in the face, there would be no problem. The next second, Aram stuck out his face, asking Lloyd to hit him with all his strength. Both were stunned. Just as they were about to intervene, Lloyd's fist had already swung out. The force of the punch alone deformed his face. At the critical moment, a hurricane suddenly emerged. It turned out that Mary had come to save Lloyd. Can you believe it? This ugly man is actually the king. Just now, Mary to find out who was manipulating the king, and to prevent the war with the country of Geo, revealed her identity as a princess to everyone, and also disclosed Lloyd's origins. At the same time, to keep Lloyd out of this conflict, she deliberately spoke harshly to him, driving Lloyd away. She then planned to take action tonight. At dusk, Mary clenched her right hand, which was marked with a spell-breaking rune, praying that tonight's operation would go smoothly. At that moment, EKA suddenly appeared behind her, soaking wet, clearly because Mary had thrown the crystal ball into the well, causing EKA to be submerged in water during teleportation. Mary sensed trouble. EKA said not to be afraid. I won't do anything to you, just cast a curse that makes you have a 10% chance of ending your sentences with meow. After saying this, EKA left, leaving Mary meowing. In the evening, the uncle set a verbal trap during a conversation with Kevin and extracted the truth that Kevin was the mastermind. Kevin no longer hid and admitted it openly, because in Kevin's childhood, they were living in poverty, and the people of Geo took advantage of the situation and stole the last bit of food from their village. Hence, he harbored deep hatred towards Geo and was determined to battle with them. By this time, Mary and the others had arrived. The king also slowly turned around to greet the arrival of the princess. Kevin had just laughed and said that the king had become his puppet when he was blasted away. It turned out that it was not he who was controlling the king, but the king was controlling him. It was also the king who had ordered the attack on the village. He walked up to Kevin, lifted him up and injected some green liquid into him. As a result, Kevin turned into a cricket monster and lost his senses. Charging at everyone, Andrea stepped forward and blocked the attack, telling Mary to chase after the fleeing king. Mary confronted the king, unleashing several hurricanes at him. He easily blocked them, then he moved his fingers, and the ceiling instantly collapsed. Debris fell towards Mary. Mary burst out from the dust, casting a spell of ice magic, instantly freezing the king. Then she added a layer of fire magic. The extreme cold and extreme heat alternated, but did not harm him at all. Mary then used a blinding trick to keep moving through the smoke seizing the opportunity to rush at the king. As her right hand, marked with the spell-breaking rune, was about to touch him, the king suddenly turned back into a kind father. Mary was distracted and was struck by his palm and sent flying. The king slowly walked forward, grabbed Mary's right hand and lifted her up, then squeezed it forcefully, breaking her right hand. He was confident that he had one and declared that this world would soon be under the rule of the demon Lord Abaddon. Upon hearing this, 
Mary, what demon lord? A large swarm of locusts suddenly attacked the bustling street. They filled every corner. The young man curled his finger into an orchid shape and flicked it gently. A gust of wind blew them away. The locusts were completely exterminated. Next, Lloyd needs to go to a place to rescue the princess in danger. The scene shifts. The king possessed by the demon lord laughs heartily, declaring the world as his own. Mary is stunned. She remembers what EKA had said. Mary clenches her fist, cursing the demon lord for not telling her sooner, causing her such humiliation, the demon lord is stunned. By the time he recovers, Mary has already run far away. She plans to let Lloyd personally deal with the demon lord. Meanwhile, Lloyd is on his way, casually dealing with the locusts nearby. He finds Aram cowering in a corner. Aram immediately feels utterly embarrassed. He confesses that he is too afraid to fight monsters. Lloyd shows understanding, saying that although we are all too weak, as soldiers, we must bravely move forward. As he speaks, he flicks away the locusts nearby, startling Aram. You call this weak? Seeing Aram stand up again, Lloyd is very pleased and continues on to rescue the princess. Meanwhile, Aram receives a side quest to rescue a woman in danger. Sure enough, Aram splits the locusts with an axe. At the same time, a huge magical array appears in the sky. EKA intends to eliminate all the locusts below. Hundreds of stones hatch from the array, hitting the locusts on the ground. Inside the castle, the frenzied Kevin fights two at once, tossing an uncle away with one hand. The next second, he appears in front of Andrea, kicking her into the wall. Now only Celine remains. She easily blocks Kevin's attack with her belt and sends him flying. When Kevin stands up again, Lloyd has arrived at the scene. Kevin rushes forward to grab him without a word. Lloyd ducks to avoid the attack and headbutts Kevin while rebounding, sending Kevin bouncing around. Eventually, he falls in front of the door. At this moment, the princess also breaks out from inside, causing secondary damage to the poor Kevin. She sees Lloyd and hugs him tightly, with tears streaming down her face. The demon lord also pops out. Mary tricks Lloyd by saying the uncle's face is dirty, asking him to help wipe it off quickly. Lloyd hears this, sure, then he pulls out a handkerchief marked with a spell-breaking rune and walks towards him with a smile. The demon lord gathers magical power to counterattack, but Lloyd gently taps him and he bursts. He wipes the demon lord's face left and right. The demon lord finally dissipates into a puff of black smoke. Lloyd also heals Mary's right hand. The two embrace each other. Any previous unpleasantness also dissipates. After the demon lord is eliminated, the town returns to peace. Lloyd successfully becomes a soldier. This young man stands out, while others run one lap. He can run ten laps, without even breathing heavily. Normally, people use magic to hit a distant statue. A more powerful person using magic can char a distant statue, but when Lloyd uses magic, he bites his tongue during the incantation. Yet the power remains undiminished, directly demolishing a distant house. The statue also turns to ashes. It looks like he will be crucial in the upcoming Inter Academy magic competition. Next, they plan to practice healing magic. Celine volunteers eagerly so she can heal her beloved Lloyd, fostering a closer relationship between them, but lacking a practice subject. At a loss, the thick-skinned Aram walks over. You're it. So the next second, Aram is kicked out fiercely. Now you're injured even if you weren't before. The crowd gathers around, showing evil grins, followed by Aram's screams of agony. At this time, Mary is leisurely drinking tea at home. Two uninvited guests arrive at the door. They are students from Rokujo Academy. The one on the left is named Angel. The one on the right is named Audrey. They came to inquire about Andrea. Mary is startled by this. Audrey was about to press further, but Angel feels an intense oppressive aura outside. She gets ready, but the one who enters is Lloyd. Angel doesn't recognize him and directly kicks him in the head, followed by a kick to his waist. He is unharmed, only emitting two puffs of smoke. The two are instantly stunned. At that moment, a fly flies by. Lloyd thinks she was trying to swat the fly and repeatedly thanks her. Angel is impressed by his unfathomable strength and asks to become his disciple, then suddenly takes off his jacket, intending to wipe his back. What is this maneuver? So they are promptly thrown out by Mary, who also throws a handful of salt for good luck. The next day, Angel and Audrey found Andrea and brought a woman named Lore. She is the headmaster of Rokujo Academy, who once had a complicated past with Andrea and now wants Andrea to return to her side. 
night. Andrea is unwilling, so Lord challenges her to settle it in a magic competition. During lunch, Lloyd asks Andrea what exactly happened between them. Andrea says she grew up in an orphanage, and that's where she met Lore. Lore was talented and smart, understood various magics at a young age, and taught them to Andrea, but because Andrea's left hand was injured, it caused many inconveniences. Lore then brought her a mithril prosthetic, which made her very happy, but unexpectedly, the prosthetic Lore gave her continuously absorbed magic, making her pay with her life, in order to pull out a long-sealed sacred sword. But Andrea didn't expect that the sacred sword had already been pulled out by Lloyd recently, because Mary tricked him into picking up trash, and he packed the sacred sword back thinking it was trash. The unaware Lloyd continues to comfort Andrea, hoping she can move past the shadows soon. Time quickly comes to the day of the competition, everyone is ready to go. However, an unexpected event occurs. The sacred sword turns out to be the prize for winning this competition. The girl raises her right hand and releases a bolt of lightning at her opponent. Faced with the sudden attack, Celine is not panicked at all, thinking her belt would shield her, but the belt does not react at all. Scared. She quickly runs away. Angel keeps attacking. Celine dodges while cursing the ungrateful belt. It has mercilessly wrapped around her for 10 years. And now it treats her like this. Seeing that the attack missed, Angel launched an even fiercer attack. Suddenly, the sky was filled with dark clouds, and lightning struck down fiercely. Fortunately, at the critical moment, the belt had a change of heart and successfully protected Celine. Celine manipulated the belt to bind Angel and pulled her forward. Just when Celine thought she had one, the referee disqualified her because physical attacks are not allowed in magic competitions. The second match featured Lloyd versus Audrey. Audrey summoned a magic circle first and shot a water sphere that covered his head, attempting to make him suffocate and lose. However, 20 minutes passed, and Lloyd showed no reaction. The referee came forward to check on him. Seeing this, Audrey had to change her method of attack. A pillar of water rose from under Lloyd's feet, submerging him completely. Only then did he remember to use magic to counteract the magic, so he clasped his hands together and instantly used an advanced wind magic. A tornado, wrapping the water around, knocked Audrey out of the arena. Lloyd won this match. The score was now 1-1. to The third match, Andrea vs. Lore, both unleashed fierce attacks from the start. Flames shot out continuously like a Gatling gun. Lore planned to deplete her magic power Soon Andrea could no longer keep up. She jumped back. Lore took the opportunity to close in and snatched off her metal arm. Just when she thought the outcome was decided, Andrea punched out, causing an explosion upon contact, directly blasting Lore away. It turned out Andrea had hidden a crystal in her arm. The crystal was activated the moment she swung her fist, exploding along with the arm. She was indeed ruthless. After magically reconstructing her arm, Andrea slowly approached her, continuously chanting an advanced spell. Lore was terrified. Terrified. Just as Andrea was about to finish chanting, Lore fainted, foaming at the mouth. In reality, this was just Andrea's bluff. Eventually, Andrea's academy won the competition, 